Hello everyone and welcome to the CDRH Learn Session. My name is Mary Brady. This presentation will provide you with some background on FDA's Home Use Medical Device Initiative. I'm a senior policy analyst within the Center for Devices and Radiological Health at the Food and Drug Administration. I'm the Center's Home Health Care Committee Chair at FDA. This committee is implementing the CDRH Plan for Home Use Devices, which is the focus of this session. This is not intended to be an all-inclusive presentation. Now let's get started. The objectives of this session are to, one, describe current home care trends, secondly, to explain why the agency is interested in home use medical devices, and also to discuss safety risks with medical devices used in the home environment, and then also to explain what is FDA's home use device initiative and what the actions the agency is taking to support the safe use of medical devices in the home environment. Home care is a burgeoning field. There are around 6,000 hospitals in the U.S. and 17,000 home care facilities. In addition, there are 15,000 distributors of medical equipment. There are, at any given time, over 7.5 million people receiving home care services, and this is at an annual cost of over $57 billion. Of these people in home care, 75% receive skilled nursing, which usually includes some self or caregiver care along with it. The majority of the patients are over 65 with multiple health issues. Caregivers are another group to consider, and as you can see, 44 million people have a caregiving role, and 66% of these individuals are women. It is estimated that in 20 years, there will be close to 72 million people over the age of 65 in the United States. It is also important to note that 20% of U.S. adults report having at least one type of disability. What we shouldn't forget, in addition to the elderly, is that there are other populations who are also recipients of home care, such as newborns and people with chronic conditions and people with temporary home care needs. This continues to increase as more and more people are now living with chronic conditions that were once considered fatal. Home care, for the most part, is a very cost-effective way to treat patients. This table shows you some examples of some pretty big cost savings for patients on ventilators, oxygen, chemotherapy, and IV antibiotics. Even though cost savings are great, we must emphasize that the care and treatment individuals receive must also be safe. As a note, even though the cost savings doesn't appear to be that significant for congestive heart failure, one must factor in the quality of life and the decreased need for hospitalization and emergency room visits that individuals with this condition could potentially endure. Let's look at some health care trends currently affecting home care. In a nutshell, home care services are rising. Advanced medical equipment is moving into the home. As medical care continues to shift from the hospital to outpatient and into home settings, the delivery of this care is shifting from clinicians to family caregivers and to the patients themselves. At the same time, the number and complexity of medical devices used in the home environment continues to grow. Advances in technology have supported these trends. Medical devices have become smaller and more portable. Patients themselves have also changed in recent years. Because patients and their family caregivers have easy access to health information, they are becoming more knowledgeable about their care options. Patients are more empowered, invested, and active in the decisions related to their care. Finally, patients are being discharged straight from a hospital setting into the home, bypassing rehabilitation facilities and nursing homes. Good discharge planning practices, including understanding of any medical equipment that must go home with the patient, is critical to ensuring a safe transition from hospital to home. Why is the agency interested in home care? Home care services are rising. 
advanced medical equipment is moving into the home. And the home is a very different care environment, which brings new safety hazards, which will be discussed at length in the next session. There are a lot of safety risks unique to the home environment when you introduce medical technology into the mix. I've divided these up into environmental issues and use issues, all of which are found in a home environment. This slide lists some environmental factors that must be considered when someone takes a medical device home and what manufacturers must consider when designing devices for the home. This slide provides some examples of use risks that must be also considered when manufacturers are designing devices for home that are to be used by lay people. All these safety risks are concerning. In April 2010, the FDA launched the Medical Device Home Use Initiative to support the safety and safe use of medical devices in the home as one step toward addressing these risks. Through this initiative, FDA will take the following actions to support the safety and safe use of medical devices in the home. There are five deliverables that we hope to achieve in the near and distant future. The first is guidance development. We are establishing guidelines for manufacturers of home use devices by developing a guidance document to address what manufacturers can do to design and test devices for use in the home, as well as to develop user-friendly instructions for care recipients and caregivers. Two, we want to develop a home use device labeling repository to include those medical devices that are cleared or approved for home use. Three, we want to partner with home health accrediting bodies to support safe use. Four, we want to enhance post-market oversight. And five, of course, increase public awareness and education about medical device use in the home. A public workshop was held May 24, 2010 to collect information for this guidance document, and we are working on drafting the guidance now. In this guidance document, we outline considerations and provide recommendations that manufacturers should consider when designing a device for use in the home. In fall 2010, FDA announced a pilot program through which manufacturers of devices labeled for home use may voluntarily submit their labeling electronically to FDA for the agency to post in a central location online. FDA is currently working with manufacturers who agreed to participate to work out the logistical details to eventually post labeling on the Internet for everyone to access. This will be similar to the Daily Med site where all drug labeling is posted. In addition, there was a public workshop on April 7th of this year to discuss the utility of such a repository as well as the potential implications of this effort. We are also meeting with accrediting bodies to incorporate medical devices into their standards. We also want to be able to impart the importance of reporting medical device events to FDA, which is a good segue to my next slide. We want to enhance post-market oversight. Since healthcare is moving into the home, it is important to obtain a better understanding of the common issues home care providers and patients experience with devices used in this setting. We don't have much post-market information about what happens in the home. Even though FDA does receive medical device reports, they don't provide rich data as to what actually happened and with what medical product. So we hope that we can work with health care professionals to address these gaps. You will learn more on this topic in the third session. We are also exploring the utility of surveys to solicit for feedback on specific home use issues or product areas to guide FDA's thinking on home use, since it is challenging to obtain post-market information about device issues that occur in the home setting. 
We are also partnering with some nonprofit organizations who work with certain patient populations and with caregivers to educate them about medical devices and what they can do to assure their device is safe. We are using social media to amplify the message, notably by developing YouTube videos. We are presenting at various forums to get the word out, and we are creating training modules, like this one, to be posted on FDA websites for public use. All in all, we want to find ways to educate healthcare professionals, caregivers, and care recipients about medical devices and the responsibilities everyone has to ensure their safe use. My hope is that this session has provided you with some background information about current home care trends and the agency's interest in home use medical device safety. I've provided you with many environment and use safety risks when medical devices enter the home environment. The next session will discuss the new safety risks in more detail. I've also introduced the agency's home use medical device initiative and what we are doing to support the safe use of medical devices in the home environment. Before I close, I'd like to introduce you to Wendy. You will see she is preparing to set up her home use device right there in her kitchen. She is taking the necessary precautions and wears a face mask. I show you Wendy because she is a lay person who independently uses her medical device for her health condition in her very own home. Keep Wendy in mind as we progress through this program. Every day, people use medical devices in their home and provide the reason why this program was created, for you to learn about FDA's role and your important role. While Wendy is an adult, we must remember that kids routinely, routinely use medical devices in their home. These next few pictures are of adorable kids using their own medical device products sitting on their couch in the comfort of their own living room. When kids need and use medical devices, it is often their parents who act as primary caregivers. The pictures of these girls remind us that everyone can potentially be affected by medical devices. I hope you found this presentation helpful, and thank you for watching.